Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Money Podcast, your source for everything money. I'm your host, Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, moneymatterstoptips.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today is a very special Reunion 2020 episode. What's that? That's when I bring on a guest I had on in the past, and I liked them so much I had to bring them right on back. Uh, so today's guest is Kevin Cooper, and he is Senior Vice President at Wellspire Advisors. Uh, Kevin, welcome back to the show. Thanks for having me, Adam. Appreciate it. Oh, man, so I'm excited to get into today's topic. So financial planning, what it takes to put together a good financial plan. Um, and I, I know you talk about that uh, quite often and you're helping your clients with that. But I don't want to assume that everybody uh, caught the, all our new listeners caught the first episode. So let's just start off with what you're doing over at Wellspire Advisors. Tell us a little bit more about the firm, please. Sure. So, so Wellspire is a wealth management firm. So I differentiate uh, this this line of business essentially advice into either wealth management or investment management. So you have some people that confuse the two. Investment management is typically you pay a fee and someone manages your assets. Wealth management, we manage assets. We manage a bunch of them, um, ten and a half billion roughly right now for individual clients. But wealth management encompasses your entire world. So in addition to managing our clients' assets, we help them look at their insurance. We help coordinate with their entire team of advisors, their accountants. We, we give advice in a holistic mindset as, as we understand their entire world and their financial goals. So um, that's including all of their assets, wherever they're held, their real estate, their liabilities, their cash flow, all of, everything that they could possibly have in the financial world. We help manage that, make sense of it, and coordinate with the other professionals of their world just to make sure we understand what's going on so we can give proper recommendations and advice. So um, let's go, and thank you for that overview. And I want to go a little bit deeper into the to the financial planning and the financial planning process because you hit on a really big point, and that is, you know, investment investment management, wealth management, I mean, two, two kind of two different um, uh, topics. One is a component of the other, um, so to speak. But when you when you talk about what you're doing in the broader scope of financial plan, I mean, it's, it's much different than I think what most people have experienced out there that are listening to this right now, um, unless they have you they, know they work with financial financial advisors and financial planners um, that are good. So talk a little bit more about some of the components that you think or some of the things that you think um, make a good financial plan for somebody. Uh, first and foremost, it comes down to goals. And I think this is where sometimes this isn't, and most of the time, it's not very clear. People want to retire at some point. They're not sure when and how much. They want to buy a house at some point. They have uh, a an idea in mind on where they'd like to live. Uh, maybe they have kids they want to help with education. So people just start funding things. They fund their 401k, they fund a 529 plan, they fund an E-Trade account, whatever the accounts are. That's why people save, but they don't tend to take a step back and really identify specifically what their goals are and then project out forward to see how close or how far off they are. And that's sort of where we come in. We help identify and and make people's goals more real, more detailed. And that's an ongoing project, right? Because as people grow, their goals may change, they may adapt, things happen positively or negatively. So focusing on the goals, understanding those are paramount. From there, everything else becomes a little bit more simplistic because once you know what the goals are, that helps you dictate what investment strategy they should have or strategies depending on, you know, for example, if they're in retirement and somebody's 30 years old and they have, they're going to retire 65, that investment portfolio could be very aggressive as long as they're comfortable watching it go up and down. Um, if somebody needs to buy a house in the next five years, you're not going to be that aggressive because you need the money to be there in the next five years. So there's certain components that can be addressed that follow and are tied to the financial goals once you actually identify what they are. 
Let's talk about um, kind of tying in, and of course, not asking you to give any legal advice or anything like that. But you know, there's uh, I think everybody focuses typically on the investment side when you say like 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 we said. Um, but uh, the, right. the uh, other part, the insurance side, or even the estate planning. I mean, there's so many other components to make sure that you're covered um, from all different angles. Let's go into some of those other, uh, and I'm sure you work with your your partners or other. Um, or referral partners or other people to do that. Obviously, lawyers draft documents, right? Pretty obvious there. But uh, let's talk about those components from a high level and why they're important to also make sure they're they're covered in the financial planning process. Right. So that's, that's a great point. So it, the investment component, I like to call the offensive piece, if I could use a sports analogy, right? Mm-hmm. That's your growth. You want to save as much as you can and get as much return as you can within reason. And in order to protect yourself along the way, in case of unforeseen events, you start to get some insurance products. You know, property and casualty, for example, home and auto. Um, we, take, we take a look at that and just make sure people have the proper coverage and they're not paying a lot of money. So we always work with independent brokers to make sure that they're, they, they don't have a captive or a sales agenda to, to promote one product. Um, and we'll look at their deductibles. For example, a lot of people will have low deductibles, but you know, for a home, for example, if if your deductible is a thousand dollars and there's a claim, are you going to file a claim for two or three thousand dollars? Probably not. You'll probably pay that out of pocket rather than go through with the claim and then be at risk of the insurance premium increasing. So it would make sense to save a little bit of money there and increase your deductible to something that you would actually want to to file a claim for like ten thousand dollars for example so looking at limits there making sure the proper coverage is in place for what you're trying to protect um liability coverage is something often overlooked called an umbrella so if you get in a car accident for example or somebody gets injured on your doorstep and they want to sue you you have liability built in for usually three hundred thousand or so if you increase that to say five hundred thousand and then get a million dollar umbrella on top of that a million dollar umbrella could cost two or three hundred dollars a year, but that protects you immensely. So if somebody sees a million dollar portfolio that you have and they're suing you or a million dollar umbrella, the attorneys will usually point to the umbrella and say, hey, that's an easier asset to grab. Let's go get that. Now the insurance company will come in and probably represent you. Why? Because they don't want to pay the claim. So it, it kind of it's kind of a, a win-win situation for you. But little tweaks like that on just the property and casualty insurance side are super easy to do and they really protect people. So it's the same concept across the board um, with other insurance products, life insurance, disability, making sure you have the proper coverage in place and that you're not paying too much for it, whether you get it through work or outside or a combination of both. And the trust and estate side that you have a will in place, you've got the proper documents that come along with it, healthcare proxy, power of attorney, uh, living will, those types of documents. Making sure that everything is just organized is good. And on the trusted estate side, there's a lot of easy things you can do, such as re- retitling accounts that actually really protect you. So if, you're, if your account is owned individually, for example, and you pass away, that's going to go through probate. But if you have it labeled joint, it can go to somebody else avoiding probate. It could, be, it could go to a, a trust. You could retitle it to be a TOD account. Uh, transfer on death is what it stands for. It can go to somebody else. So there's a lot of things you can do in that defensive spectrum that don't really cost you a lot of time or money that can really protect you very well. But it's just important to speak to somebody who knows what's going on and make sure that everything's sort of buttoned up. I love it. Um, and uh, let's talk about the estate uh, briefly. So a little bit more on the estate side of things. And I love the tips you gave, by the way. And so it's, it's like umbrella insurance. Why wouldn't you do it? A couple hundred bucks, you can you add some protection to yourself. Um, you don't do it, you're, you're at, you could be at, you could be really in some trouble, especially if you have any type of net worth or something to protect a home, anything. I mean, it's just one of those no-brainers. And to, and in the insurance side, um, a couple of different things there. So let's talk a little bit about the estate side. Um, so the importance of having an estate plan. So if you don't have a will, um, anything that doesn't have a beneficiary designation essentially goes through probate, which is you know, a process that you have to go through for court. I live in L.A. L.A. is a very tedious probate process, and it's actually quite expensive to go through. So if, if, if you, most people that put their estate plan together did, did so because they had to go through a probate process themselves through mm-hmm. their family. So 
you know, having things go through probate is a real, real big pain in the butt for your significant others or your your heirs. So just having a will in place is very good because uh, they'll still go through probate, but the will is actually very specific in how things should flow. So it makes things more simplistic. But again, if you can have things like beneficiaries designated that don't have to flow through the will, those are avoided in probate, saves a lot of time. It's also private because probate is public. So people know what's going on in your world. So just, you know, setting that up ahead of time is very good. Um, people can set up what's called a revocable trust. It's kind of the same thing. It's yours. You can do whatever you want with it. You can put money in, you can take money out, but upon your demise, it avoids probate and there's specific instructions just like there would be in a will that stipulates what should happen to those assets upon your past. And you can put your home in there. You can put essentially anything in there. So there's a lot of things you can do to still maintain control, but just make things a lot easier through the probate process. The other thing is um, ancillary documents which is something like a power of attorney, for example, designating somebody to make financial decisions for you in case you can't do it and you're incapacitated. Um, same thing on the health side. You can do a health care power of attorney. So if you can't make decisions, somebody's there to make those decisions for you. Um, also having uh, the language drawn out to say, hey, if I'm incapacitated, here's what I want to happen to me if I want to be in life support or not. These documents are very standard. They come with a package. When you go to a lawyer these days, they'll have a will, and they'll do all those documents, and they'll do one for your spouse, too, if you're married, um, and they'll tend to do revocable trust. So a lot of these things are very, very important. It's just a matter of taking the time to focus on them. And frankly, I think that the biggest thing that holds people up from, from uh, creating an estate plan is really trying to identify who those parties should be, who should make the financial decisions for me, who should make the health decisions for me, who would be a guardian for my child if me and my spouse were to both pass away at the same time. It's not fun to think about, but it's very important just to have your documents in order in case of a worst case scenario. That's awesome. So Kevin, I can talk to you about this all day long, but our time is about up. So that being said, if somebody is listening to this and they want more information on Wellspire Advisors or to connect with you, what's the best way for them to do it? Uh, the best way is just to go to the website, www.wellspire.com. Um, you can find me on there. Uh, myself, my colleagues are listed. Uh, our website actually does a pretty good job at promoting blogs and, and newsletters and things like that that are actually all organically written and drafted from uh, our own advisors and associates. So it's a pretty good spot to get some education in general. Um, but, yeah, if you go on the website, all of our contact information is there. Happy to help. Fantastic. Well, hey, Kevin, uh, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your background and also your tips on uh, on financial planning and uh, to kind of, you know, new year, new decade, all that good stuff. If, you, if you're out there and you don't have a financial plan yet or you uh, definitely want to uh, get one created, um, definitely make sure you check out Wellspire Advisors and, uh, and ping Kevin and uh, see what they're up to over there and see if it'll be a good fit. And uh, Kevin, thanks again for coming on the show.